coming to the Soma Life Masterclass. And my name is Lynn, and we have a couple people here that I'd like to introduce you to. We have Priyanka, who is one of the people who works with me. And I also have the joy of working with Alicia. Alicia came into my life oh, about four years ago, and she's this tiny little person, but has the energy of the sun. So I've always said, we couldn't have had you be any bigger because you would have burned and scorched us with your love and your light. <laughs> She is a magical creature. She's an absolute goddess. And I am proud to call her a dear friend and someone that I get to do this journey of life with. We have this beautiful thing in common in that both of our fathers were born in uh, South America in a country called Guyana. So she feels like she is a family member, part of my soul for sure. And someone that I consider to be my protege. I've taught her so much. She's taken it and run with it. She's definitely far exceeded me in so many things, her healing abilities, her wisdom, her compassion, her kindness are just extraordinary. And I am um, delighted for what it is that we're gonna present here to you today and for other things, that she, oops, other things that she and I are working on together. I was channeling the other day and I was so disoriented. I went to stop the recording and instead I pushed leave and I had 12 people on the platform. And I <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that is so funny. Channeling Venus, I hadn't channeled her in a bit. Today was Mother Mary. God, her message was gorgeous. Anyway, so Alicia, let me let you take it away. Yes. Well, I'm so excited to connect to you all. And, you know, today's purpose and intention and the reason why we're gathered here today, it's so powerful because right now we're in the energies of these full moons, right? And this is our our potential to really release things that don't serve us so that we can ascend so that we can reach our souls to that next level that we desire and right now the Taurus energy is very grounding and there's also this kind of like desire to create stability in our lives that comes from that Taurus energy it's an earth energy so the intention for today is to really step into our quantum abundance channels. And what this means is actually stepping in to our worthiness for the wealth that we wish to call into our lives to create the stability so that we can do anything that we desire. And we're going to be tapping into healing our relationship with wealth. We're going to tap into what it means to have generational wounds in connection to our wealth. We're going to be tapping into what it means to stretch into the quantum field to see the potential of the bun abundance that we could call in. And Lynn is a master of the quantum field. She has done so many leaps into the quantum field and has made, you know, a, like a beautiful amount of abundance from really stepping into her soul's purpose. And this is the energy activation that we're bringing through to you guys today is first this healing, this contemplation of where we're at, where are those wounds, where are those leaks in our energy that are calling, causing this pull where, where it comes to that potential abundance for money, the energy of money. And how can we become aware of that so that we can heal that and then step into the quantum realm with the highest potential abundance that we can earn for ourselves? And I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of my story just so you guys can learn a little bit about my relationship with wealth and sort of what I've been through. Um, and then Lynn could chime in as well, too. So, um, yeah, so basically, you know, I started this work when I was about 22 years old, and I was in a place where I was just dealing with so many different traumas, you know, and I had issues with the relationship with my mom, I had like issues, with the relationship of both of my parents, and I essentially did this 
like I was trying to move out and there were so many blockages that were in my way. And no matter how much I tried, I felt like I was always like hitting a ceiling. It was like, I couldn't afford it. It was like, there was just so many things that were programmed into my mind that were preventing me from taking that next step in my life. And I had contacted Lynn and I was like, Lynn, I don't know what's going on. I can't do this. Um, you know, I feel stuck in my life. And I went to Lynn and I experienced one of the most profound healings of my life that helped me to just break through all of my barriers of resistance. So as we did this healing, we did this technique called psychic surgery. And I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with this technique, but it essentially, um, you know, you it's a somatic form of energy healing where you go into your blockages and you learn what are the emotions, what are the connections, what are the things that are holding you back from fully stepping into your potential. And as I did this healing, I saw all of these wounds that I was holding on to. And I was in the space where I was empowered to acknowledge it and release it. And after I did this healing with Lynn, I was just sobbing and crying and I felt this beautiful release. And one week later, I was able to get my first apartment. And this was something that I was trying to do for four to five months. And it was literally like right after that healing, I got the offer and it was the perfect amount of money as well. And I, it was over my budget that I began with, but I also had this new ignited confidence that I could do it, you know, and I was able to do it, you know, and I survived for that time frame. And um, eventually I kept doing this work. And the next step for myself was I had a dream house that I wanted to get. And I was in the space where I was 25 years old at the time. There's like, there, I was like, there's no way I could buy a house now. And literally the universe aligned the pieces for me in so many different ways and gave me the abundant amount of wealth to buy my dream house in Costa Rica at 25 years old. And it was truly the inner work that got me there. It wasn't that I was born with, you know, an infinite amount of money. I have come from a first generation family and there was so much feelings of lack, so much feelings of trauma that were connected to my relationship with money. And I really had to go in and learn how to heal these aspects of that to step into my power. And this is something that so many of us are programmed with that we kind of have this fear around money that there's not enough that there that we need to, you know, just have scraps. And when we step into the energy of abundance, it's so expansive. It's so loving. It's so beautiful. And, and Lynn always says, says this, and this is a perfect segue for you, Lynn, is money is an energy and she goes where she is desired. She is a goddess and she goes where she is desired, where she's loved and she's welcome. I learned that from my mentor, Melanie and Lair. And, you know, when you think about it, if, if you give a gift to someone and they're like, why did you give me this? This isn't enough you know, you never give me what I want. Do you feel compelled to ever want to give to that person again? It's kind of like how money is with us. Like we worry about money. We're afraid of money. We curse money. We think it's not enough. Like there's a lot of negativity that we put with money. And what I've noticed is that the rich get richer because they have this mentality of abundance and luxury. And Melanie was sharing with us. She said every night she goes to bed, she does like these Neville Goddard affirmations, like uh, Abraham Hicks asking it is given of like having a better feeling thought. Like if you're afraid, like, oh my God, there's not going to be enough money to pay for something. <laughs> then you just say, what's a better feeling thought? What could I think that makes me feel better than that? Oh, that the universe is abundance, that, um, that money comes to me easily, that God always provides, you know, like thoughts that we can literally, because we are computers and we program our mind with our thoughts and with our feelings, more our feelings than even our thoughts. So you just start feeling better feeling thoughts. 
Have any of you ever um, come across the Abraham Hicks work or any of the Neville Goddard work? To look up Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks channels Abraham, Ask and It Is Given is the book. There's also another brilliant book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. But get the 1937 version that had all the original spiritual content in it, because a lot of it got edited out in later versions. And um, then the, any of the work of Neville Goddard and the Law of Assumption. Really great stuff. So when when you come to recognize that there is this exquisite energy that, that money is, we're all made of energy. Einstein proved through the theory of relativity that E equals MC squared. And that basically means that everything in the universe is made of energy. Anyone agree with that? Yes. So if we're made of energy, we vibrate at a certain frequency. So think of a radio dial. I'm 61. So for me, a radio dial was this long vertical thing and you would turn it and go <laughs> and if I wanted to get to you know 103.5 but I was all the way down at 92.7 I'm at a different vibrational frequency and I have to attune to that frequency but understand that that frequency is emitting music and talk and all the time so there's a frequency where money is sharing and giving wealth and abundance to us all the time but if she's doing that at 103.5 and we're all the way down at you know 92.7, there's a gap. So you can step into the quantum realm. I just bought this sweatshirt. I don't know what's happening, but I think I'm allergic to the sweatshirt because it's making my nose itch. But it's really nice and warm and comfortable. I think I have to wash it. Sorry about that. Oh, it's that. so cute. It's so cute. It's got like a little hoodie. It's got cozy a sweatshirt oh, season. It's like flannel on the inside. I know I went for a walk this morning at 7.45. 755 and it was cold like the the wind was going through my sweater that had holes in it so I, I came and put this on and I have socks on and leggings and a shirt and another shirt because it's just cold yesterday was 79 today it's like 44 it's like Papa. thank you nature god <laughs> so there's a way that you can enter the quantum realm and you can begin to postulate you can begin to propose propose to the universe imagine imagine if this happened so here was one extraordinary manifestation that I had. Uh, Melanie said in one of her groups, imagine if you had 2,000 people attend a master class. And I was like, oh my God, imagine if I had 2,000 people attend a master class. And I opened a master class about teaching uh, free ESP measuring and enhancement skills. And 100 people signed up, and then 200 people signed up, and then 300 people signed up, and then 400 people signed up, and then 508 people signed up for this thing. And I was like, how did that happen? I literally stepped into the quantum realm. I proposed, you know, and imagine if I had this happen. And it was, it was extraordinary. You can propose anything into the quantum realm. There's a couple ways to get to the quantum realm. You can go to the quantum realm by imagining yourself going up 100 feet, 200 feet, and then 300 feet. And you've kind of taken yourself out of the egoic realm. There was a program that I wanted to do and it was $30,000. And I was like, you know, putting the, the imaginings of this happening into the quantum realm, and then it manifested. And I was able to make this thing happen. And it's been one of the most extraordinary programs that I've ever done in my life. And I just kept imagining myself going into the realm of all, not, not what, how does Melanie put it? She says, not what's probable, not because it's based on the past and I've always done it this way. So this is probably how it's going to happen. Not even the realm of possibility because there's what's possible which is kind of like you start to step towards the future but you're still is like well it's possible that, that could happen but when you step into the field of pure potentiality everything exists and this is the quantum realm now you got to be careful you have to be really mature emotionally when you go there because just as easily as you can postulate something good happen all the bad stuff lives there bad too. Stuff. Yes. so you have to be careful that you aren't going in going Oh my God, imagine if I went bankrupt. Oh my God, imagine if I lost everything that I have. Because the universe goes, oh, you want to experience that? Okay, here we go. <laughs> and then they begin to make all that happen for you. So when you step into those realms, just make sure that you're coming in, like thinking the happiest and best thoughts. Don't go in when you're sad and depressed. Because you're just, it's like the sorcerer's apprentice. Anybody ever see the Disney movie where Mickey Mouse is like the sorcerer leaves and Mickey Mouse has his magic broom and all kinds of, you know, chaos ensues. Anyway, when you go into the quantum realm, 
you go in to a place where everything you've ever wanted already exists. Everything you've ever desired is a seed that's been planted into you by your higher self for you to manifest in this lifetime. And you can go in, I went in and I met a future aspect of myself who makes $12 million a year. I was just blown away by her. And I, she was like, okay, align to me. So I'm in the middle of this health program and this whole regeneration of myself to take myself out of the version of me that's, you know, comfortably making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to being someone who could make a million dollars a month. And she exists. You can meet future aspects of yourself that have already handled and mastered the things that you struggle with. And you can bring that knowledge and wisdom back to where you are now. And this is where quantum abundance and quantum spirituality and quantum healing happens because there's a version of you that already knows what your life is like without the thing that afflicts you, without the thing that drags you down or causes you pain or makes you scared. Anybody have anything they're scared of? I have some things I'm scared of. I'm scared of ghosts. I used to be scared of spiders until I found out that I had an incredible relationship with the spider kingdom, the arachnids, really magical. So what you want, what you desire already exists somewhere in the universe. And when you match your frequency, when you take your little dial and you move it all the way up to 103.5, it can't help but manifest. The universe can't help but bring that thing to you. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's literally about going within and saying, you know, universe, I've wanted this thing. I've wanted this thing for so long. Please show me what it is I need to do. And the universe made me say, well, you need to stop eating flour and sugar and dairy and corn and pork and gluten. Say, okay. And then it says, and you need to start working out every single day. Okay, I can make those changes because I want a body that's not 50% body fat. <laughs> I like one that's maybe 30% body fat. And then it's almost like God, God takes a blowtorch to you and just kind of burns all that stuff away. Okay, God, I'd like to make 10,000, 15,000, $25,000 a month, okay? So here's what you have to do. You have to start going live every day on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram. Oh, there's a way to have all that happen at once. You have to start sharing your life with people. You have to be willing to come out of hiding. You have to be willing to open your heart to the world. You're going to have to give up your fears. You're going to have to make peace with your mother, make peace with your father, make peace with your husband, make peace with your wife, make peace with your children, you know, make peace with your neighbor. Even though your neighbor is 10 feet over on your property line, like you have to make peace with it. All of these things, spirit will point things out to you that it, it needs you to do in order to have the life that you've dreamed of having. And it's also about your boundaries too, like deserving, like deciding what you're worthy of and deciding what's not in alignment for you, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Worth is such a big part of it. Knowing that you are worthy of having everything, everything that you've desired is meant for you. I had a Kabbalah teacher and he used to say, here's everything that's unmanifest, everything that exists in the heavenly realm. And then there's this line. And then there's everything in the physical universe. And every time you make a desire for something, the universe goes, okay, here it is, but it can't get through because we have worth issues, you know? But as we raise our value, as we raise our frequency, and as we raise our worth, the universe goes, okay, let's have that thing drop through. Okay, let's have that thing drop through. You know, as we go up, it comes against these levels of things that are stacked for us. And it's literally all just waiting for us. And the one that gets in the way of it is us. Us. We literally get in the way. It's the fears. It's the insecurities. Uh, anybody else insecure? I'm insecure. I'm insecure about a lot of things. I'm 61. I'm like, oh my God, I have like stretchy skin on my neck, you know? You literally start... look like you're 35. Thank you. <laughs> and I act like I'm about six. So we're good. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing this detox. And I have this pimple, this hard, nasty pimple that just yes. like it feels like a button <laughs> i don't know what it is. Like I'm it's no of... it's on your third eye it's your activation oh, oh button. yes I, I decided <laughs> that it, it was my third eye but it's kind of fallen over it yes. like i sleep on the right so it fell down a few inches and, and it went That's so, so funny. i need to push it back to the middle and push it back up i need to realign my my third eye 
Yes. But that's the thing, right? Um, even with like the amount of work that we've both have done, it's like a never ending cycle. And really like one of the greatest things about this process is that it gives you the toolkit so that when you are dealing with life, when you're in this, these moments of fear, you know exactly what you can do to dive in and to help yourself feel better. There's this Buddhist quote that I always go back to, and it's like, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. And this is exactly what we're doing here. We're teaching you guys how to surf the wave of the universe so that you know the techniques, the tools to really catch that wave and to own it and find the joy in the process of it. Joy is, you know, like all the, all that spirit wants us to do is to experience joy and happiness and to have fun. And we're like slogging through misery and suffering and, you know, blame and shame and guilt. That's, that's like man-made. You know, God didn't say, I want you to be guilty. God doesn't say I'm punishing you. That's a bunch of stories that were made up by humans to try and control people. All we are ever meant to do, I want you to just breathe into your heart and to feel this. Close your eyes for a moment. Just take a breath in. And as you exhale, exhale into your heart. And all that God sees when, when she looks down on us are these beautiful, innocent beings of light. And that's all that we're ever meant to express in the universe. That's the truth of who we are. You can feel the truth in my words. I know you can. Listen, Alicia and I are like needles in a haystack. We don't pay for advertising. You know, we're barely online. And if you're here, you've been led here by your spirit because there's something that we can possibly offer to you. Yeah. And I think one of the greatest um, things in this process was really like we were dedicating ourselves to healing ourselves. You know, we weren't doing this because, you know, we wanted to open up a business or anything. It was really about that genuine work to dive within ourselves that we, we really discovered our own gifts and people naturally were gravitated towards us so that we could help them on their path, you know? And since then we've helped so many people be guided and redirected back to their light and back to their connection with God and back to their connection with really the expression of themselves with their light. And, um, I wanted to do this activity with you guys. And it was so powerful for me to do this because I didn't recognize, how much trauma I was still holding on to until I really did this activity. And I was in this place where I was always in this, this feeling of lack with abundance. I was always in this space where I didn't feel like I had enough, no matter how much I made. And I recognized by doing this activity that it was such a deep route of like the where it stemmed from was all the way into my childhood. It was places of me growing up where I was told like, I couldn't have this, I couldn't have that. And I was put into this programmed into this mindset of lack that it was expressing itself in a way that I couldn't call in the abundance that I really desired into my life. So the purpose of today's activity is going to be tapping into our relationship with money and where that route really started from. So if you guys have your pens and papers, we're going to do some writing. So I want you guys to just take a moment to ground yourself. Lynn, you just led that beautiful breath to welcome us back into our hearts I want you to find yourself back in that space to take a moment to reconnect yourself back into that breath, back into that space of alignment and, and just feeling within yourself. I want you to feel into the route of yourself as a child, wherever that energy leads to, I want you to find the place within you that your inner child is waiting for you to connect to you. And I want you to take a moment and ask her how she feels about her relationship with money. I want you to take a moment to ask her 
what are the feelings that she is associating with money from mom and dad? And taking this moment to understand what is being expressed to you at this time? Are you around abundance? How are your parents dealing with money? Is there a feeling of lack around you? Is there a feeling of fear around the energy of money? Is there a carelessness around the energy of money? Is she allowed to have what she truly needs? Is she allowed to have what she truly desires? Taking a moment to fully step in and communicate and be with this inner child right now. And when you feel ready, you can begin to write, to express, to channel through, to allow yourself to communicate what's coming up for you right now. What's holding you back? from feeling that true relationship with the energy of abundance? What are the traumas that we are holding on to? I remember when I did this activity with someone, they were actually brought back to Christmas and they remembered that they really just wanted this one gift for Christmas. It was like an easy bake oven. <laughs> Hello, 90s kids. <laughs> and they just really wanted it. And they thought in their minds that they were going to receive it. Like they literally put into their head, into their mindset, like, okay, Christmas morning, I'm going to open it up and it's going to be there. And they were so excited about this. And this was the one thing that they wanted. And they remembered going under the tree and they didn't see anything that Christmas morning. And they went up to their parents and they said, how um, oh, did you forget to put my gift in, under the tree? And they said, I'm sorry, this year we decided that we weren't going to get you any presents because we couldn't afford it. And from that moment on, it created this wound with money where she felt like she didn't deserve gifts, that she didn't deserve presents because they were also making her feel guilty for desiring something when they didn't have that much. When really in actuality, the, the, like the following week or something, like her mom had made a large purchase for something that she didn't really need. It was like a necklace or something. She remembered like seeing her mom buy that necklace and thinking in her mind, like, do we not have money or do we have money, you know? And she, like, in her mind, she was also like, do, do I just not deserve that thing that I desire? And does she only deserve that thing that she desires? And this was like a 10-year-old girl going through this mentally, you know? And so often it could be something so small, but it creates that trauma in our minds that we don't even realize that this is adding on to our relationship with money, with abundance. And if anyone feels called to share as well, you can feel free to share anything that, that's coming up if you feel called to. Notice the feelings that are coming up for you as you're making these statements. Does it feel as if you have negative thoughts associated with abundance, fearful thoughts associated with abundance, joyful thoughts associated with money? I just noticed that one of the, one of the comments that I wrote down just now was my mom who said to me, you can't have what you want. Like I wanted something, I want, I wanted this doll, the Christmas story reminded me, I wanted this doll that you pulled its string and you could record a voice because I wanted to say how much I hated my mother. Like I wanted to be like, I hate you. 
And I didn't get that doll. Instead, I got like a stereo, which most children would have been delighted to have a stereo. By the way, in the 60s, we had easy bake ovens with the light bulb. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got to make the little cakes. Yes. Little icing, chocolate, vanilla. Oh, my God. Make the little cookies. Yes, we had that. It was a light bulb. That you is know, so, well, I only existed in the 90s, so I thought it was a 90s thing. <laughs> it, goes, it goes back to the, years to the 60s. I was just going into the context of my existence in yeah, this no, no, I, I, but, you I know, mean, I was around you know. in the 60s, I just wasn't here in this body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Priyanka says, uh, my parents always fought over money, and my mom always complained that there wasn't enough. I never wanted to ask for anything to add to the conflict. Oh, that, that was from that Teresa was from Facebook. on Facebook. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's love. amazing that we have people in Facebook oh, tuning in too. There's an abundance hey, of Facebook. people also doing this, which is beautiful. Yeah. My parents are so old. You can't have what you want. Oh, I remember I wanted to go on a trip to Paris with my... Um, I think it was my 10th grade French class. I just always knew that Paris was my favorite city and it was $600 that my mom just didn't have at the time. And I just remember being so sad, so sad that I couldn't go to Paris with my French class. And then I went on my own back in 1987. Yeah. I went for nine days on my own and I was just like, oh. I've that always said so that I want a home in Paris. Like I want there to be a vacation home in Paris. We're just the second home in Paris. A home in Paris, a home in Hawaii, a home in Palm Springs, and a home in New York yes. for the East Coast. And one in or Sedona. <laughs> no, I don't want to live in Sedona. Or, or I'll have the home in Sedona and you'll visit it. That I would definitely do. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's just so powerful because so many times when we're told we can't have that thing, like to allow ourselves to give ourselves that gift as an adult, you know, to give ourselves that permission of being worthy and deserving of those desires, you know. I remember when I was in high school, it wasn't really a money thing per se, but it was more of like um, a strict parent thing where I really wanted to travel and do this like international service program. And it was like volunteering in, um, I can't remember which country it was at the time, but I just wanted to travel and do volunteering. And I was a senior in high school and I remembered, I was so excited. I got accepted into this program. I applied online. I brought my mom the booklet. I was so excited. And I like bring it to my mom and I was like, mom, like I've always dreamed of this. This is my time. I'm so excited. Like that, the fact I even got accepted and it wasn't that expensive. It was like $1,000 or $2,000 for like two weeks to travel around with another high school group and go to all these different things. And she told me no. And she said that she didn't think I was old enough to travel. And she like, you know, was being protective over me. And of course, three years later, when I was old enough, I literally went to Thailand by myself like <laughs> to do this volunteer program. Literally, my first flight was 21 hours by myself. And I was just like, I'm going to give myself this gift. Mm. And it was so healing and it was so enriching to give myself like what I desired. Um, Claire said, I found a feeling of smallness, wanting to ask my parents for money, but expecting them to just say no. So why would I even ask? Wow. Yeah. Our ability to receive gets shut down. I, I'm just, I'm haunted. I can literally hear my mom saying, you can't have what you want. Yes. It's so funny. I wrote it down. You can't have what you want. Yes. And here's the thing with our relationships. It's so much deeper than just our parents because it's their parents' parents, right? Because maybe they grew up in a situation where they literally didn't have anything, you know? Like personally for my family, I know that they came from Guyana and there wasn't like money around, you know? They, li they literally lived on a farm. And for us yeah, yay. <laughs> to now have this abundance, it's like a blessing. And um, 
it's just like really learning that, you know, that even that person who maybe gave us like this wound, like the wound is so much deeper than that. It's really a generational thing. And when we contemplate that, it's like, where did their wound come from? And you see that it came from there and then it's that from there and there and there. And it's like this endless cycle, you know? You know, it's interesting. Um, I did ancestry.com, the DNA thing, and it came out and it said 13% black like kenya tongo all, all these countries in africa and i was like well that explains a lot so i'm like hey dad spit in this tube and my dad came out he was 27 percent black and he was like what now my grandmother's dead and obviously my great grandmother is dead but on ancestry.com i find this picture of my great grandmother and this woman is black and mm. I said, dad how did you like how did you not know and he said lynn you don't understand they were very wealthy in Guyana. One uncle was the chief of police, the other was the harbor master, but they had black servants and they would beat them. Like they would accuse them of doing these horrible things. And my father's like, I'm traumatized by that whole idea. And I was like, I'm black and proud, you know? Like, I, and then we found out we were 38% Jewish. And I was like, I'm Sammy Davis Jr., you know? Because anyway. Lynn's laughing because she's old enough. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I was so proud. I was like, it explains my boobs. It explains my ass. It explains my temper. Because I've always felt like an angry black woman on the inside. I swear to God. <laughs> but I was like proud. And so one of my friends says to me, oh, you're an octoroon. And I was like, I'm an octoroon. So I posted on the internet. And my mother's best friend, Aunt Mary, who's black, she comes and she goes, girl, you take that down right now. You have no, I, and my best gay friend is black, James, you know, James Skinner. She's like, you have no idea. That was used as a derogatory term. You have no idea how much of the pain comes with that. So I was recently in Vegas for my birthday celebration. God, that still makes me cry. And there was this gorgeous, gorgeous, it was the Beatles love show. It was Cirque du Soleil. And they were singing Blackbird. And they had these curtains that came down and they projected this little black girl. And I was like, I bet I'm a relative of hers. So now I claim every black person in the world is my relative because according to ancestry.com DNA, I have 329,472 relatives. So I'm claiming everybody. I don't care, you know? And then, and then Jesus goes, because Jesus talks to me all the time. He goes, well, why do they just have to be black? What if they could also be Puerto Rican and Mexican and Italian and French and German and everything else that you're in there? And I'm like, I claim the world. And he goes, there you go. He goes, that's what I did. I claimed the world. So I love that much. Like I have that much love in me to claim the world. And that's what I think that this is really all about. Because someone said to me, money has the frequency of love. So if you can love everything, you can allow yourself to receive that kind of abundance. And I thought that was so beautiful. That is so beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just I'm an like, emotional. When we, yeah, when we examine the layers of those generations, you know, it's that's when you really see where the roots of all of this pain come from. You know, there's so many, even like in being disconnected from those roots too, and being told that you can't own those roots, you know, or so lied for, about them, you know. Yeah. And it's a different journey for everyone. And it's really about owning like whatever comes up for you and loving it and healing it and being with it and honoring yourself, you know? And all Priyanka ourselves. asked, oh, sorry. <laughs> the, the, all of ourselves, owning all yes. of ourselves. Yes, owning all of ourselves. So as a parent, what do you tell your kids if you can't afford a toy? Tell them that mom has a broke ass bitch consciousness but she's working on it and if she heals it you'll get that toy so can we just put that like for the future that's all that's so funny. tell her tell her mama needs to talk to her boss about getting another raise that's funny well there's yeah, that be real about it just be real about it like you yeah. know or you can also find another um avenue to give to them you know like there's so many ways to give without 
coming from a place of lack, like even if you create something for them, you know, you can create your own thing that makes them feel good and loved. And, you know, it's really about coming from a place of love, even if you don't have that, but not projecting that lack onto your children, you know? My, my Kabbalah teacher taught me this fascinating thing. He said, what we crave is the spiritual energy that a physical object gives us. And at the time I was like, I want a Maserati. He's like, okay, knock it off. I'm like, no, 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 seriously, feeling like I drove a Maserati. You know, my dad had a Jaguar and I was like, oh, you know, dad had a Jaguar. So I drove a Jaguar and, you know, it got handed down and it was like a used Jaguar. Like Lynn, knock it off. These are like first world problems, really. And he's like, what do you think a Maserati is going to give you? And I said, this feeling of abundance. And he goes, but what if you could create that within? What if, what if it wasn't about a car or, you know, shoes or the purse or the jewelry or anything else? What if it was about something that could be manifested and created within you? And as soon as I made a shift, my first month in business as a, as an online coach, I made $63,000 and I was like, how did that happen? And then the next month I was like, oh, I only made $21,000. And my coach is like, Lynn, knock it off. You only made 21,000. What did you make before you started online coaching? I'm like $2,000 a month. And she's like, exactly. You know, everything is perspective. And she, so it's, it's about an energy that we allow to come forth to be of the greatest service. Because what I did is I opened and I said, I'm here to be of service. And it wasn't a focus about the money because we focus on the money. We had fear, we had, you know, shame, we had guilt, we had, oh, this, you know, expectations and money's like, I'm out of here. It's about bringing the love and bringing the joy to the things. So you could say to your child, Priyanka, what do you feel like that toy would give you? What is it that you want that toy to make you feel? And see if there's something else. Maybe he just really wants a cookie, you know? Sugar-free oh, cookies, of course, because sugar rots are cheap. Even for the easy bake oven example, right? Like I think a more nurturing way to have done that in that context of that person would have been like, hey, um, you know, we weren't able to get the oven, but instead let's bake a cake together. Let's mm -hmm. let's do something together because that's yeah. what she really wanted was just that feeling of being able to cook, to make something, to be together with her mom, you know, because her mom was a baker, you know, so it was really about that connection that she was desiring. So to find a different avenue to do that and to create something and there's always an opportunity to give from a place where you're still making that person feel abundant, even if it wasn't maybe that exact thing that they perceived they wanted, they still wanted that feeling you know I love that that's exactly what it is so yeah. I want you all to think of what's something that you've desired what's something that you've really wanted that has felt elusive to you yes. like it feels like it's outside of your grasp it feels like it's something that you've always wanted but somehow you haven't been able to achieve it yeah I saw Nina said my parents were depression era babies so money was spent only on the necessities yeah. Mm, yeah and I feel like especially like in that time frame too just that energy of lack was all around externally like it wasn't even, even just in the home it was like everyone was in that and I feel like honestly right now with COVID a lot of people are in this game right now like oh I can't spend money because of COVID now you know and like I feel like though, right? It's like an external fear that's projected into us because at the end of the day, there was people who literally became billionaires during COVID. Um, and I read this article where it was like, um, the largest number of billionaires were made between the time frame of 2020 to 2021 during COVID. We had to find another way. My entire business that was people walking through the door of my sanctuary, suddenly everything went online. And I, you know, my income went through the roof. Um, Lynn, what's something that you wanted, uh, that you have wanted, that you have felt like is elusive for you? I love, I, you, you kind of looked up, that was, I, that made me smile. I do that the same thing. I'm like, mm. <laughs> a, beach. a beach house. Beach house. So yeah, what, would, oh my God. What beach would you want to live on? I would love to move to Hawaii. <laughs> oh, 
I lived I've been, in Hawaii's been call, has been calling me. Which which island in Hawaii? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> okay. I just know it's been calling me. Yeah. So here's what here's what the quantum field wants you to do. It wants you to begin to, and Annalise does this brilliantly. She teaches a class on um, vision boards. Begin to say, I want a beach house on Kauai. Do you want to be on the North shore of Oahu? Do you want to live um, in Kauai? Do you want to be on the big island? You know, do you want to be near civilization? Like look at a map, see where you feel drawn. Your soul is cause, calling you to a place where you lived before. That I can promise you. And what would the energy, like if you could be in Hawaii, you know, I'm on the East Coast, Hawaii is six hours behind us and sometimes it's five hours behind us. What would you do? Would this be how you were retired? How would you want to retire? When would you want to retire? You know, look into the feeling that that would give you. Oh my God, if that came true, I would feel, and then calibrate yourself to that. Right, you know? the story. Okay. Yes, this is exactly what I did for my home in Costa Rica. And it's so crazy because I literally did not have the money for this house when I started this manifestation process. I was literally- 25 years old with you know seventy thousand dollars in student debt and loans and the universe literally placed this house into my awareness like I was literally walking on the street in Costa Rica and some shady guy was like hey I have a house for sale like and I was like okay no thank you and I bumped (laughs) into the guy again it's like a longer story and like I was like okay is the universe trying to tell me something because I gotta just check out this house you know (laughs) And she ended up buying it. So when I went to this house, it I had a meditation four years ago that had like a house with white curtains coming down the side that was on the beach. And it was literally the same exact house that I saw in my meditation. Yep. And when I was there, I just remembered stepping into the front of it and hearing like, it's going to be yours. And I was like, girl universe I got two thousand dollars in my bank account how is it about to be mine (laughs) and then we had a big project that you worked on I had I literally so one of my specialties is web design I literally built 15 websites that month like non-stop websites websites like and I also in the middle of the night I woke up and Um, I heard a message from the universe and they told me, put your money in Ethereum, which is like a cryptocurrency. And I was like, girl, I'm about to blow this money. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Like, I don't know about this stuff. (laughs) And I literally put it in and like two weeks later, it doubled. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, the universe really be coming through. (laughs) Narima, what is something that you have desired? Uh, so I think I desire the same as Lynn to live next to a beach, but like not a specific place exactly. And I also wrote like a good education. Beautiful. So think about where you would want to be educated. Do you want to be educated in Europe? Do you want to be educated in America? Do you want to be educated in in Asia? And where do you want that beach to be? My my mom and and her boyfriend have been going on cruises. She's 84. She's having the time of her life. And she's like, hey, you want to come on a cruise with us? And I'm like, yeah, sounds amazing. And she goes, we're going to go to Alaska. And I'm like, Alaska no thank you <laughs> i'm going on a cruise i want to go somewhere actually warm. go alaskan cruises are so beautiful i went once it was so nice yeah well we'll have to have that conversation but you know like get get specific about what it is that you want and here's the crazy thing the universe goes oh she wants that let's make it happen you know okay. nina what do you know what you want to study for your education yeah I do. yeah Perfect. Write it down. Get a picture of it. The universe loves visuals. Absolutely loves visuals. Nina, what do you want? What do you desire? Um, 
an abundant, successful career. Okay. And, and a home on the beach as well. Beautiful. So what does abundance look like? Like how much is abundance to you? Um, okay. Let me change that to prosperous. Okay. And how much is prosperous? Prosperous is minimum to start, <laughs> let's say um, $15,000 a month in Beautiful. my bank account. Beautiful. Beautiful. So prosperous is $180,000 a year. Yeah. It, so it, it's going to have to be more though, because if 15,000 hits your account, that's after taxes, right? Correct. So you're probably looking at something more like a $250,000 a year job. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Get specific. Look, the universe wants specifics. Okay. Priyanka, what's something that you want, my love? I have a huge, huge list. <laughs> I love that. Um, maybe, I guess, like uh, time abundance. That's what I'm chasing, where mm -hmm. in, maybe I'm like leaping and jumping into different timelines and I'm able mm -hmm. to do a lot in a day. That's That would be amazing. Love that. And um, Teresa, I know you're out there in Facebook land. If you're still with us, what is something that you want? And Celine, I know you're off camera and I know you're listening. Um, is there any, hi. Um, what do you want? What's something that you desire? My list is long. <laughs> Good. Yes, let it be long. The universe loves long lists. Okay, what's at the top of the list? I guess first would be to be multimillionaire because with that money, I have a lot of things that I would love to do. Beautiful. I would love, I would love to have my own foundation to help children and families mm -hmm. in needs. I would love to have my um, health center that I would have a lot of um, people that would be able to help. And even if people would need treatment and they cannot afford it with that money, I would be able to pay for it Love or that. help them. Um, I would like to travel a lot. Um, and at the same time, even if I would be, this is how I imagine it. Even if I would be busy, I would feel like free at the same time. I don't know. It's like, yeah, I'm boss and I'm, so freedom, freedom is important for you because money provides freedom. Yeah. You know, it provides the freedom to travel. You know, my, my, one of my stepbrothers, I have six stepbrothers, three from my dad, three from my mom. And one of them is a retired air, airline pilot. And I always thought I would take Michael out of retirement. I would have my own private plane and I would just always have him be available to fly me wherever I want. And I'd be like, Priyanka, Laura Lee. I'm sending the plane up to Canada. We're heading to Paris. Alicia, let's go down to, to Newark because we're heading to Nina. Come on, we're going. We're all going to we're going to Paris for the weekend because I I want to go have French baguettes and drink French coffee and I want to go and shopping. Brioche. And brioche. So awesome. And I want to <laughs> and I want to visit. Um, I want to go eat at the Tour d'Argent and I want to go visit Versailles because it's calling to me from my past life memory. I want to say at the George Sonk. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've been to the George Sonk. It's incredible. And that's where we would stay. We would stay at the George Sonk. Of course. Of course. Awesome. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Claire, what, what is it that you desire, my love? Uh, it would be to travel and teach way of mastery and uh, quantum techniques and help people heal. I love that. I know that's happening for you, by the way. They've already shown me. <laughs> awesome. Gorgeous. Thank Alicia, you. Alicia, what do you want, baby? 
debt free. That is my number one desire. I just made the largest investment of my life. I paid $20,000 for a coach to upgrade my life. And let me tell you, it has been the most transformational journey. I've learned so much. She's helped me to learn more techniques to accelerate my business. And it's been such a powerful and beautiful experience. And I feel so transformed and I'm so excited about all of the things that I learned. And it was literally one of the best investments of my life. And it's like, I know that I'm going to take everything that she taught me and use it throughout the rest of my life ongoing and to be able to teach it to my students as well. And I'm just so excited by that. And I just got to pay off the rest of that. And <laughs> kind of all good. Cause I feel like I'm so happy in my life right now. You know, there's just so many beautiful things coming together and that, you know, paying off will give me a sense of freedom and, you know, that's gorgeous. Hey. That's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Well done. So my love, you said you wanted to take everyone through a meditation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're ready. Ready. Okay. Ready. Beautiful. So you guys could just get ready in a comfortable position. Oh, wait, wait, and... wait, 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 wait. I forgot something. Teresa, who's with us on Facebook said she wants to travel first class luxury and she wants to go to Ooh. Venice and take the Oregon Express. I love that, Teresa. There, there's also Jan Greenstone. You forgot to ask her. She's also on Zoom. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Hold on. Uh, Jan, would you like to share with us what it is that you want? I can't see the Zoom platform. Well, she's off camera, so maybe, yeah, she's not there. Okay. All right, great. Oh, okay, no worries. Okay. All right, so meditation. Yes. So you guys could just start to get comfortable. However you okay, feel. Can, we ha can we have one moment for Celine's puppy? Look at that puppy. Oh my God, hi puppy. Hi baby. Oh my God, he literally looked when I said it too. Oh my God, so that precious. so cute. He looks like a little fake puppy dog. He's adorable. Look at that fur. Yeah. That is so cute. cute. All right, sorry, easily distracted. Squirrel, thank you. Yay. So we're gonna begin now just by finding a comfortable place with our bodies, just taking a moment to tune ourselves within our bodies, taking this moment to just be with ourselves, placing our awareness within ourselves, taking this moment to just adjust, to let go and release. And if you feel called to, you can place your palms facing upward on your lap to just be in the energy of receiving. We're going to begin with three deep cleansing breaths. And we're going to step into this meditation with the intention of healing any blockages that we have towards stepping into the quantum field of the abundance that we desire. We're going to begin by breathing in through the nose, welcoming in positive white light into our bodies. And on the exhale out, we're going to release anything that no longer serves us. Just letting go, releasing, taking this moment to let go and step into the energy we desire and deserve. And once again, we're going to do a deep breath in through the nose, calling in this beautiful white positive light into our bodies. Feeling this energy entering in, so smooth, so beautiful, and breathing out through the mouth. Just letting go and releasing anything that no longer serves us. And one more time, a deep inhale in through the nose, calling in this beautiful white light, calling in this beautiful energy into our bodies. And exhaling out through the mouth. Just letting go and releasing anything that no longer serves you. You begin to feel this bubble of white light gently surrounding your aura, surrounding your body, 
taking this moment to feel this beautiful field of white light protecting you. This beautiful field of white light helping you to step in more deeply into your energy. Taking this moment to step into your power, to step into this beautiful space of allowing yourself to step into this bubble of healing. Taking this moment now as you rest in this bubble of healing to feel your own power, to feel your own fields of ascension. As you begin to travel upward with this bubble of light, you begin to notice yourself reaching up further into the clouds, allowing this light to take you on this journey deep into the space of your own spiritual guides, of your own level of connecting to your palace in the clouds. As you begin to reach upward with your energy now, you begin to feel yourself in the space of this beautiful cloud city that's before you. Taking this moment now to recognize how beautiful this cloud city looks. Taking this moment to connect to this energy. Taking this moment to connect to your potentiality, to the field of manifestation, to the field of unfolding your desires. Stepping into this power and stepping in to this energy now. As you begin to walk towards this palace, your own palace of abundance. You take a moment now to connect to the energy of what it feels like to call in the wealthiest version of yourself, the version of yourself that has allowed her to have, the version of yourself that has worked past any resistance, the version of herself that has fully stepped in to her energy of allowance. Stepping into this field, stepping into this love. And as you continue to walk in this doorway now, you begin to notice the energy of your inner child waiting for you. You take a moment to greet them, to feel their presence, and take a moment to allow yourself to connect to this inner child and to communicate with her, to ask her what she desired in her life that she couldn't have. And as you communicate with this inner child, you begin to notice in your palace, there is a doorway. And on the other side of your doorway, you know that there is all of the desires that you wish to have in your life. This is the room of abundance. This is the room of your worthiness. Take this moment now to take the hand of your inner child, to walk through this doorway, to step into this connection, to step into this room, opening up the doorway, to welcome yourself in, to having everything you desire. Taking this moment to fully receive everything that you wanted in life to allow yourself to feel the deservingness, the worthiness of calling this all into your presence and feeling what it feels like to truly have, to truly accept, to truly be activated by your own worthiness. Stepping in to this field of energy now. Stepping in now.
And taking this moment to just allow yourself to feel this joy of having, to feel this joy of the expansion of this energy, to step so deeply into the space of allowing yourself to have everything that you so desired in your life. Feeling this energy, feeling this tingling sensation through your body, feeling how good it feels to be nurtured, to be loved, to receive, knowing that you're worthy of receiving. And taking this moment to just stand in this room to receive this energy activation, to step into this frequency of having it all to step into this frequency of deserving it all. And taking this moment to just fully integrate with these energies, to feel yourself bringing back this energy into your 3D body. Taking a moment to just integrate into the body, feeling yourself anchoring down this worthiness, anchoring down your desires, anchoring out down all you can have. And taking this moment now, just to begin to gently wiggle your toes and fingers, to slowly and gently welcome yourself back into the body, feeling this activation, feeling this power, feeling this love, feeling this nurturing, feeling these feelings of deservingness, welcoming back into the body now. I'm taking this moment to just integrate. And if you feel called to, you can just write down any messages you received. I know this was really, really a powerful integration to really just step into that because we don't allow ourselves, you know, we don't allow ourselves to have. Yay. <laughs> Does anyone want to share anything that came up for them? I know that was really powerful. You could also type it in the chat, you know. Oh, thank you. Uh, for me, it was just a wonderful, I felt really loved and in bliss. And the one thing, the message that came up is that to trust the universe. Yes. To, yeah, that it's working for my good. So, so thank beautiful. you. It was really beautiful. <laughs> that is so great.
Thank you for sharing that and so much blessings for your integration with that and just really stepping in to your worthiness, you know, like you deserve it. You deserve your dream life, you know, you deserve to have it. Does anyone else want to share? I was working with that energy of you can't have what you want. Um, and was just told that this is just merely a concept that I have uh, given to myself that's just absolutely not the truth, you know? That I can absolutely have everything that I want. And um, it just felt really empowering. I felt really embraced by love, very similar to what Lynn had said she had experienced. Very supported, very nurtured. Thank you. Yay. Yay, so Did anyone I else? Alicia, I love Alicia's meditations. Yes. <clears throat> Yay. Did anyone else want to add anything? I just wanted to also um, mention about Lynn and I's program that we're going to be doing together. Um, so that's going to be the next part. We're just going to talk a little bit about the, the course that we're doing together. And we've so intentionally put this course together to help people become activated, to step into their potential, to step in to this abundance of income that wishes to come through so many of us to step into the, the dream life that we desire. So I'm going to be talking about the course that we've put together and what that's going to look like in that container. So if anyone has anything else that they want to share before we step into that, you can pop that in the chat. And if not, I'm just going to start to step in. Oh, Priyanka, can you give me permission to share my screen? Thanks, Queen. Yay. Okay. So the name of the course that Lynn and I are doing it's called Your Year of Abundance. So essentially what this course is, like what we gave you guys was just a little piece of like this larger um, activation, this larger group that we're putting together. It's a two month group coaching program. So this is a really a calling for someone who's ready to shift their feeling with abundance, someone who's really to, ready to step into their power and to learn tools and techniques to step, take their, themselves to the next level with calling in their dream life. So this is a two month intensive group coaching program. Um, and the intention is to set you up for your most lucrative and abundant year yet. So Lynn and I have done a similar program to this before in the past. And one of our students completely accelerated and took off. Like she was able to make, um, you know, she had her own group coaching program and she make, made near six figures, I believe. And she blew up on TikTok and she was really able to apply the tools and techniques that we had taught her. And it was just so absolutely beautiful because she... You know, so many of us are healers by heart, but we don't necessarily know how to also, you know, generate an income from this and how to really step into the abundance and that frequency that we deserve. Like how to make a business out of it, you know, yes. and that's one of the things that we have both done successfully. So, you know, one of my mentors always said, don't teach it if you haven't mastered it. Yes. So the intention of this program is we're essentially going to be setting you up to create this abundance in 2023, to create a plan, to create your offerings, to create this transformative container that will help you to really push yourself into this next level of calling in what you deserve and what you desire. 
So we're going to be learning planning and marketing techniques. So we're going to outline business plans for you. We're going to help you create your streams of income, help you showcase your programs. We're going to teach you like different marketing techniques. And you're also going to be learning different intuitive techniques from Lynn as well, including the clean slate technique, which will completely clear your relationship with um, any resistance that you have towards abundance and money. So this is a group coaching program. So you're going to be able to be with a community of other entrepreneurs who are really helping, um, who are really stepping into that next level. So it's going to be in a setting where you have your other peers to connect to, and we're all going to be going through this together. So it's coached by both Lynn and I, and my background as well as that I'm a marketing professional by trade. Um, I've done marketing for eight years and, um, you know, I've worked for million dollar companies, helping them to set up their marketing. And I've also worked for, you know, spiritual companies that are starting from scratch. And that experience has really helped me to learn different methods and different tools to, to helping people to amplify their voice and that's really what marketing is about it's about amplifying and owning your voice so essentially what this class with this course is going to be it's eight 90 minute classes with your classmates we're going to be doing weekly meditations it gives you access to a community of other entrepreneurs we're going to be learning the clearing the clears and clean slate technique we're going to be practicing with other students there's going to be canva tutorials budgeting advice and we're going to give you like this money magic workbook and we're also going to be doing manifestation board exercises together. So the in intention of this course is really to help you step into your fullest power to let go of any pieces of resistance that you have towards calling in your abundance and really setting you up to make multiple streams of income to really step into your power and share your gifts with the world. So essentially, like this program, I'm just going to give you a comparison so you guys can understand the value of what we're giving. So I'm in a similar program with my mentor, and this program that I invested in was $20,000 for that program just for me, like for, um, it was like $20,000 for four month program. So we wanted to make this program more accessible to other people, and we wanted to make this program so that you can really just step into your power and that you are basically investing in yourself so that you can step into this potential of abundance for you. So we actually made this really affordable. Like I said, other programs could be upwards of $10,000. Our program is $1,666. And this is for the two month program, which is eight classes. And it's absolutely going to transform you. We also made an affordable payment plan and it's $444 for six months to pay off the program. And we really wanted to make this program so accessible so that you can really learn, you can really embrace yourself, you can really invest in yourself and commit yourself to this energetic upgrade, you know? And through being in this consistent container, like imagine how activating just this small session was. Like we just gave you guys, you know, bits and pieces of this, but to be in this full container and that consistency will really help you to break through and really help you to call it in and really unprogram any beliefs that are holding you back from that potential. So. And then tell them about the VIP. Excuse oh, yes. me for one quick second. I got to step away for one minute. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You're so right. I always forget about the VIP and then Lynn always reminds me. So the VIP will essentially give you 
four one on one sessions. So you'll get one session with me in um, December and one session with Lynn in December and then one session with me in January and one session with Lynn in January. So this one to one session is going to be like an hour plus and this is like kind of a bonus for the VIPs so that we can really like work one on one with you we will do individual healing with you and you'll really get the opportunity to just work with us in that one on one setting. And then you're also going to get like an abundance gift box so it's going to have um, some extra goodies in the box. And you're going to also get boxer access to us, which is basically like unlimited access to us where you're able to um, ask us any questions like during the week, if you have anything that comes up and it's essentially like a walkie talkie, where you can just like send us these different voice notes and things like that. And also with the VIP, I'm going to help you create templates for your business for your offerings like during the class we're going to be going over um learning the tools and techniques for you to do it yourself but with the vip i'm going to create it for you so you could get like these beautiful templates and i'm going to show you an example like i just helped someone create like their templates for a retreat that they wanted to do so this is what it would look like like we would basically create all the templates and the outline together and during our one-on-one -on -one session we would also like kind of walk, work through the offerings that you want to create and and really um help you to focus on that so um and then the last thing and there is are, that there we, there are two spots available oh, for yeah, the VIP. There's only two spots available because the other spots were taken. So basically, also, you're going to get a personalized hypnotherapy recording to listen to every day. And it's essentially going to like unprogram any limiting beliefs from your mind. And that's going to be customized for each of the VIPs. And the, the VIP is $1,000 extra paid in full. Thank you all so much for being here today. Yay. Thank you for coming and being with us. It's always a delight for me to make new friends. Yay. Alisa, thank you for that gorgeous, gorgeous meditation. Yay. Thank and thank you, you for me. laughing with us. And Yay. you know, if if you have any questions about the program that we do, that we do this program, there's other things that we do. But yeah. if there's any way that we can be of assistance to us, please reach out at any time. And Definitely. just really thank thank you everybody for being here. Yes, and if you guys have any questions about anything, any questions about the program, any questions about anything we went over, Lynn and I are so accessible. Feel free to send us a DM. We're excited to have our conversation with you guys. So, yeah, I'm sending you all so much love. Thank you all for being here, everybody. I know Celine, so Celine mentioned the hat she has to go, and I have a one o'clock, so I have to run my. Yeah, my me stuff. too. Sending right. you guys so much love. Lynn, right. Narima, Priyanka, Nina, thank you all so much for being here. Thank Alicia, I love you. Okay, love Talk to you, you all later. Take we'll care. Bye. Bye.